Woods Folk Art Multi-Surface Paint. Oh my gosh, it is so much fun and the colors are so exciting. When I got these colors to play with, I just fell in love and you will too. And you will fall in love with what we're gonna paint today. Look at this gorgeous collection of flutterbys. Look at the different colors and displaying them all together on four different wooden canvases out of this world. So, let's get started. Wooden canvases are an absolutely wonderful surface to paint on. They can be found at plaidonline.com. All kinds of wonderful things can be found there. The first thing that we're going to do is to paint the whole canvas with citrus green and just paint it two or three coats, whatever you want, letting it dry about 15 minutes between coats and you'll get beautiful coverage when you do that. After it's good and dry, we want to prepare, and I'm working on mat board, we want to prepare the stencil border. Now, at plaidonline.com, you will find the pattern that will just fit on this so nicely, and you just want to transfer it to the prepared surface, and then using stenciling tape, you want to tape it off. We'll want to paint that, and I'll mix citrus green and wicker white about half and half, or whatever you like, and then I'll actually come in and do a little painting on that. Sometimes I'll use two coats, just depends upon the type of coverage you want, and I'm not going to take the time to do all of this. It's quick, it's easy, and there we have it, and we'll let that dry. All right, let's come over here for a moment to the actual wooden canvas, and you can see where it's been painted and it's dried. Now, the fun part. Well, it's all fun. We're gonna do the stenciling. And again, this is another wonderful stencil from Plaid Online. And when you put this down, you want it to lap over the edge just a little bit to bring the actual stencil out close to the edge and with the stencil tape, put it down. Now, you can do this one of two ways, with the stencil brush or with the dauber. I like the dauber. For me, it just works beautifully. And I'm just going to put the dauber into the citrus green and just blot it on my wet palette and then in an up and down motion, just put this on. Again, I'm not going to take the time to do the whole thing, but then when you take this off, you can see how beautifully it stencils. And of course, you want to clean your stencil. Now, the pattern for my flutter by can be found on plaid.com, plaidonline.com, and you'll want to transfer it to the square. Actually, let me come over here and pull a little bit of this stencil tape off so that you can see. And I'd pull it off, of course, on all sides. And you want to trace the pattern onto a sheet of tracing paper. Then just take a piece of chalk and firmly go over the lines on the back. And this will all be pulled off. Center your little butterfly and using a stylus, a ballpoint pen that doesn't work, the handle of a paintbrush, or what have you, go over your lines, and that will transfer to your surface. I'm going to go now to my mat board. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to paint the butterfly. I am using a filbert brush, and Look at the point of this brush. It's sort of like a flat brush with a rounded curve. Now you can use a round brush, you can do it with a flat brush, but I think this is the most fun. I'm going to start, first of all, with a wicker white. I'm on a wet palette. Use plenty of water on the sponge when you set up your wet palette. Now, using a brush stroke, I'm just gonna touch, press down, and lift up as I come in. Here we go again. I'm going to touch, really press on that brush, and pull into a point. If you want to go over it a second time, you certainly 
can do that. No problem. Very, very easy to do. I'm gonna pick up a little more paint. Come down here, touch, press, and lift up to a point. Beautiful little brush strokes. Or if you have trouble with brush strokes, just color book paint it or fill it in as you desire. Now let's move down to this one where you can see I've done the brush strokes. If you want to come back in with a graphite carbon, if it helps you to retransfer the comma strokes on fine, or they can be done without transferring pattern. Just whatever you are comfortable with. Okay, now I'm going to start in first of all with a little round brush. Let me show you this little round brush, just a tiny little one liner brush. And I'm going to pick up my citrus green. I'm just going to come up here and make a big circle, a medium circle, and a little circle. Then, as long as I have this green in my brush and I'm touching the water, blotting on my rag, and thinning it so that it will flow, come in, touch, apply pressure, lift and drag, lift and drag, lift and drag to a point. And of course you want a brush that is in lovely condition to do this with. You can actually decorate the butterfly any way you desire. But this is a quick and easy, fun, and very, very effective way to do it. Now, I'm going to come back with my black and fill the brush with my black. I'm thinning it just a little bit with water. And I'm going to come in and I'm going to touch, press, lift, and drag to a point. Now, here's a tip. Sometimes, if you don't blot, water will get on that metal ferrule and it will come down and mess you up. So that's something that you want to be very careful about. With the point of the brush now, just kind of outline around these strokes. You don't have to draw a circle, just kind of loop it in like so. And then I'm going to do a tiny little comma stroke right around the outside edge of that stroke. Back in here on these lower ones, touch, press, lift. Pick up a little more paint. Touch, press, lift, and drag to a point. I'm going to come back now with my wicker white and pick up a little of that, being sure that there's no water on the metal ferrule of the brush. Going to do a tiny bit of line work right here to shape in the head a little bit. There's also a 10-0 brush that you can use. I mean, there's just two or three hairs on that, almost. And some of you might find that brush very, very comfortable to use. It's so tiny. Then, I'm going to come back to my black, and I'm going to just put a dot there a dot there, a dot here, a dot here. I'm going to run an outline at the very end of his tail. Another dot right here. That's it. It's absolutely easy and wonderful to do. And just look at this wonderful butterfly. Now I want to show you something. Look at this little border. Oh, don't say you can't do it because you can. Look at my little tiny brush. That's that 10 0, 10 aught brush I was talking about. And I'm going to put that on between this beautiful stenciled border and the actual surface where the butterfly is painted. All right. I say liner, you say thin. That's what I always say to my classes, so that they'll remember to thin that paint down so that it will flow like ink would flow from a fountain pen. So I'm thinning that paint very thin. I'm making sure that there's no water on the ferrule of the brush. Then I'll hold the brush so that the handle points straight up towards the ceiling, and then I'll just start in on this edge, going slowly but fluently. Yeah, it doesn't have to be perfect. Mine isn't perfect. And then we'll come back 
and we'll just put a little dot here and there, building on down like that. I won't do all of it. I'll come back with my wicker white and just put the tiniest, tiniest little dot of white in the center of that black. But that is an easy and a quick finish to our butterfly. Have fun with these. They are so happy. They are so easy. You're going to enjoy it. I know you will. Paint, paint, paint.